Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're tackling a natural convection problem or a free convection problem. And today I'll try to do things a bit differently. Instead of doing step by step and writing along the way, I already did the question, broke it down into steps, and I'll just you know, try to break it down with explanations and make the video a bit faster. So let me know if you like this format better. Problem statement reads, determine the hourly loss of heat from a bare vertical steam pipe whose diameter is 200 mils and the length is 5 meters. The pipe wall temperature is 450 Kelvin and the temperature of the surrounding air is 300 Kelvin. Assume that radiation heat loss is negligible. So let's start by highlighting a couple of things. We want hourly loss of heat. Okay, so we want Q, Q, but instead of grabbing our Q in watts as we usually do, right, instead of having watts, we're actually looking at for hourly rate. So we want, you know, some sort of energy, so joules per hour instead of watts, which is joules per second. So we need to remember to convert when we get to that point. What else? We have a pipe, vertical pipe, so, you know, if we were to draw it, maybe here in the corner. Oh, actually, there's a, there's a drawing here. So this is, you know, this is our situation. A vertical cylinder or vertical pipe with a diameter of 200 mils and a height of 5 meters. 5 meters in height. What else? The pipe wall is at 450. So the, you know, the outside of the pipe is 450. And T infinity is 300, right? So the temperature of surrounding air that's not going to change regardless of the temperature of that guy there. Oops, this is 300 Kelvin. We can assume radiation to be negligible. That means we're only going to consider the convection, which is how the, we expect heat to be you know, exchanged between the solid cylinder and the fluid. So first thing we're going to do is actually find you know, what will be a good mean temperature or bulk temperature between these two guys here so that we can grab the properties for air. And once we do that, we can go to the figure I just showed you, the table I just showed you, so that we can find what is the appropriate correlation to be used in this problem? Okay, so the first thing I did, like I said, 300 and 450 divided by 2 gave me 375. I'm going to take properties at this temperature here. And in this case here, that's, you know, straightforward because, you know, it's going to be between my 400 and my 350. And if you need to interpolate this, it's quite straightforward because it's just going to be halfway through them both, right? So you just need to sum these two guys and divide by two as opposed to doing the actual interpolation uh, step by step. It's easier for us to interpolate. So I interpolated and got these values here already written down for you guys. And then we go and we do the analysis. According to the geometry, they're going to give us the characteristic length, tell us which range we need to look for in the Rayleigh, and give us a correlation for Nussle. So in this case, we're looking at the vertical cylinder. The CL is the length, okay, so the height of the cylinder. This is quite important, this is quite important. Okay, note that's not the diameter. It will be the diameter only if the pipe was horizontal, not, you know, vertical. And then there's no range because there's only one correlation that's given in this figure. A vertical cylinder can be treated as a vertical plate when the diameter is greater or equal to 35 times the length divided by gra uh, Grasshoff of L, okay, so Grasshoff of the, of the height. Note that this is, you know, let me just write it a bit bigger. Of subscript L, okay, indicating that's not grass half of the diameter, but the one for the length, one for the height, to the one fourth, right? To the one fourth. So what we need to do is, you know, calculate grass half, see if this condition is met, and then if it's met, what we're going to do is go to the vertical plate analysis. Where is it? Here, there, here it is. Vertical plate analysis, and then we're going to need to find the appropriate range of Rayleigh so that we can find the appropriate correlation. Okay. So grass half. We know grass half is Density squared, dynamic viscosity squared, gravity, beta, delta T, CL to the third. In this case, like the table said, CL is the length or the height of this cylinder, right? Things to be considered. This guy. This is air, right? We're dealing with air. So it's an ideal gas. So because it's an ideal gas, because air can be approximated to an ideal gas, Beta will just be 1 over 
RT fluid in Kelvin, right? So in this case here, we have uh, decided RT fluid for the property will be 375, so it's sort of just going to be 1 over 375. Just remember this has to be in Kelvin. If you remember that, you're safe, all right? So here's a calculation for Grassoff density to squared, gravity, assuming we're on Earth, 1 over T fluid, difference in temperature, my height in meters to the third, and then the dynamic viscosity squared. Okay, I got this to be 9.12 times 10 to the 11th, and then what we do is we check if the condition is met. All right, so in this case here, diameter, what I did is I just I divided by the length, so I did diameter divided by length to have the ratio. So diameter is in meters, right, it's going to be 200 times 10 to the minus 3, because it's in mils, and then 5 is already in meters, so you leave it that way. And over here, I'm going to have 35, the constant, divided by Grassoff to the 1 fourth. Again, Grassoff, subscript L, right, for the, heat, for the height. And then what we get is 0 0.04 is greater than 0 0.03, which is good, which means we can indeed use the vertical plate analysis. Okay. What I did next is I calculated Rayleigh. Rayleigh is just graph of time per annum, so that's very straightforward. I simply grabbed this value here, multiplied by this guy here that we got from our interpolation, and I got V6 times 10 to the 11th. So with that information, we can go back to our vertical plate analysis. We noticed that to the 11 falls right here, right? So between 10 and 13, which means that my correlation will be this one here, correct? So it's going to be 0.1 of Rayleigh of L, again, subscript L, watch out for that, and L being the height of the vertical plate, in this case of the cylinder, uh, to the one-third, to the one-third. Okay, so Nussel correlation 0.1 Rayleigh to the one-third. Rayleigh I had calculated just before, this, here it is, so I just plugged it in there, and I got, you know, this number which can be approximated to 854.4. This being our Nussel, we know that this has to be equal to the convective coefficient KL. Again, L being the characteristic length. Once we calculate we're grass off, uh, everything's going to be using the same CL. Right? Same thing if we were to do Reynolds. Right? This is not the case, but it'll be the same case as Reynolds. And then we already had the conductivity. Where is it? Conductivity from the interpolation as well. We had um, the CL from the start. That's the height of the cylinder, so that allow me, allows me to calculate what is my convective coefficient for this case. So 5.44, from this point onwards, we can apply Newton's law of cooling, Q equals H, A delta T, and then we can solve it. All right. Now, the hourly loss rate, which is what we're after for this guy, is going to be Newton's law of cooling. Um, we have the convective coefficient. The area is going to be the outside area of the cylinder. And note here, I'm only considering, and we're going to talk about that in a second, I'm only considering this area here, right? So only this yellow area, the surface area of the side of the cylinder. And I'm ignoring, at least for now, this blue area here, right? So we, we are aware that we're going to have convection happening like so, because the cylinder is warmer than t infinity, so we know convection is going to make our Q leave and go upwards and rise, right? At the same time, we know here on the top, right, on the blue part, this is also going to be taking place. But note that what I'm doing here is I'm only considering the yellow area, okay? So pi dl or 2 pi rl. I've converted my diameter into meters, so I have meters times meters and I have meters squared there. Uh, the difference in temperature we had from the start, and then, this is probably the thing that I highlighted right at the beginning, right? I'm converting from the watts into joules per hour, okay? And I actually left the unit conversion over here. We have our watts per meter squared Kelvin from convective coefficient, okay? And then note that the meter from diameter, meter from height, cancels out this meter squared. The difference in temperature cancels out this Kelvin. And then... If I were to leave it at that, I would have watts per, or sorry, watts, right, which is joules per second. So if you convert your watts into joules per second and then you multiply by the relationship between seconds and hours, we get, we remove these two seconds and we're left with joules per hour. Okay, so we'd have that in watts. And then if you convert it, you would have this big number in joules per hour, which, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three. We can say instead of joules per hour, say megajoules per hour. So 9.23 approximately megajoules per hour is the hourly loss of heat in this, of the cylinder under these conditions. All right, now let's talk about the different areas, the, sorry, these are different areas here, the blue and the yellow there. Um, if I were to account for the blue area, what I need to do is actually do a flat plate analysis, right? Because the top of the cylinder is a flat plate, a horizontal plate. So to do that, I'll need to do, calculate a different grass hop and all, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
when we do where is it when we do this uh this check here it's precisely to see if you know we can neglect or ignore the top part right and if the the, the check is good we're just saying you know the ratio between know that this is the ratio between diameter and length right so the length is much greater than the diameter so that you know this checks out so therefore it works now note that if i were to include you know there's two ways i can do this analysis one is do a flat plate analysis for the blue part and then find a new grasshopper find a new so find a new convective coefficient and i can do that it's fine uh, or i can do a simplified version which is here i'm just going to add add you know the blue the blue area blue blue area okay so i'm, I'm saying you know newton's law of cooling considering the same coefficient i'm just increasing my area to say that the blue area is also uh, giving away heat so what would change well i would have the pi r square there my r would be obviously half d just 0.1 meters and then i would have an increase i would go from my original what was it 9.23 megajoules to 9.32 megajoules okay so it's a, an increase of about one percent it's actually less than one percent but about one percent increase so indeed it's negligible and the the increase itself so the what the, the boost that you get with this fellow here is about 92 kilojoules per hour okay and if you were to do the flat plane analysis if you were to do the flat plane analysis and do it step by step what you get is 140 kilojoules per hour so you know a bit more but still in the order of one percent increase in respect to the original one that we got from the size of the cylinder so it goes back to that idea you know do you need to do it yes or no it depends on how precise you want to be depends on why you're doing this analysis if you're doing it for the sake of a problem you don't have to worry about it if you're doing it for the sake of you know an engineering project and something that you really need to know with precision then you might want to account for this and you can do it like so if you don't need that much precision or like so if you do need more precision okay um so this is you know this is our answer here and that is it for this problem as per usual leave any comments that you may have below ask me questions and consider liking this video if it helped you out all right we'll talk soon